Here's the next project I'm working on. It's a paddle boat, Mirrorville. Uh, here's a front look at the drawings. Now what it is is, these are plants I got off the internet. I'll post you where I got them. And what it is, they're free plants. And uh, I increased this for a 24 inch boat, but I wanted a 36 inch boat. So I went ahead and I uh, scanned, uh, we took the pictures, the drawings that they had, which were like eight and a half by 11 sheets. And I sort of blew them up another one and a half percent. Then I cut them out and sort of pasted it all together to get the drawings. Let me show you what I have so far. There's a, a whole number of, of uh, pages that you copy down. This is, you can see how I got that sort of glued together. I had to make it three pages. These are the different parts. Uh, these are the parts I have glued out already, or cut out already. And I'm starting to put the little details on, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, here's another page that shows you the different decks. Uh, and you get pages like this you put together. This shows you the whole deck layout and of all the decks. I mean, it's it, it's a quite a nice setup for no cost. All right. This is what I have so, set up so far. Here's the front. Now I'm only doing half the half the boat. And uh, see the different layers uh, made out of different woods. Basically, I had some thick um, some thick. Uh, Mahogany that I made it out of. Now you're starting to see them. Starting to do the little detail like the doors and the windows up here. And I'll show you the and what it is now. I'll take this apart. Uh, these are gonna these holes here. I had drilled and I got it. They they actually line up. And I'll show you what what those are for. But first, I want to get all of the. This sort of the little, like the windows and the doors glued on there. And I'll show you what that looks like after. What I'm using is uh, just one eight plywood, I cut one inch wide. And what I'm going to do is I have a whole bunch of these one eight swabs. And I like to use the nose. And I use those for the bottoms and the tops and the center of the windows. But I'll show you how that looks like in a little bit. A little bit. Now, one thing I found real help. One thing I found real help on this project is I made this little cutting jig. But it is just a piece of piece of plastic. I had glued a board on here and cut a slot down there, or cut a section out, put that board on. Got a little piece of wood I can adjust here. And cut it, set it to cut it, especially when I got multiple cuts. Set it, <clears throat> then I take the saw up against the block helps me keep it square, and I can just cut the piece. Actually, I, I picked up the saw at a garage sale. It's the best thing I ever got. Nice and fine blade, makes these little cuts, works out real nice. Next part I'm doing on a boat, somebody put it together, you can see it put like a door is using that one eighth rod to make doors and like for the windows. But I wanted to make, I got this handrail that I had. Originally, I was going to do something fancy like soldering on a piece. But I found that was a total pain. So, all I really do, well, the posts are drilled, I'll drill them all the way through. There it is. I put a post down through the two holes. And what it is, I take, I'm using number 12 wire. And I found the easiest way to get number 12 wire is I had this four strand of number 12 wire. I mean, there's four wires in there. Well, three of them are covered 
but one is bare, just wrapped with paper, so it's really easy to get out. Now, I got these wires, but if you look, they're all twisted and curled and all that. And I'll show you how I straighten them out real easy. I got, a stand -up. I got a vice just sitting in here. And I have a bullet now. This is where I store it. But you can see how twisted the wire is. Bend the wire a little bit at the end. And wire. Clap it on the vise. Take a pair of channel locks. Lock it on the wire. Stretch it out a little bit. And then I just beat. As you can see, it's nice and straight now. Next, I'm putting in these railings. Like I said, I was going to solder them together and try, but it was a pain to try putting it together. So all I did was, all I'm doing now is, I got holes drilled all the way through these pegs, the posts. And I'll go ahead. Roughly marked uh, the length of the wire I need. One. Two. Four. Now, I cut those wires roughly to size. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in. Uh, got my little post down. Like I say, I got the wire, I put it in, I bump it to the outside, and I make sure it's just this outer end here. Then what it is, I slip it in, take my tweezers, and I put it in the corresponding hole on that side. Now in here, cut those the right size. Put this one in here. And grab one of them. Scrap piece of wire. I make sure they're pushed all the way over good. The top was a little long. Take some off of it. That's what it is. I want these. Roughly to end right in the center of so when I put the next ones on. And what it is, I take another post. Then the last thing I do. Good old super glue.
All right. I got three more to do. And then I'll show you how I'm continuous I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop these off, this, this top part off. Once I got the rest of them in, then I'm going to go ahead and mark these top so I know where to cut them because they're too, they're too long. Unscrew this base, screw it from here, sand it. I got some mudding to fill in I got to do. I use Bondo. And then I'll sand and I'll paint. And I'm in a sense, and I got a, a steps to put in the front and a cutout. And in a sense, I'll finish this section, primer it, and maybe even paint it, and then that's done. Because I'm building this in sections. Once this and this is done, putting that top on, I can start building the rest of it up. All right, that's it. I need a railing up here on this deck. And this is what it's going to look like. Now what it is is, I started out with a three-quarter by three-quarter inch board, scribed a quarter inch line, one-eighth, then I laid out all these holes out of the solid board and I drilled it all at once. Then I cut this board free from the three-quarters, laid out down here, cut this 3 sixteenths, cut that off, sanded that board, then I sanded the top of the rest of that when I had the holes drilled through, and I cut out a quarter of an inch. That way, and but while there was still a one solid board, I drilled all those holes so everything lines up exactly the same because I drilled them at the same time. Now I'm putting this in. I'll put it in, set it up here, and sort of clamp it down so it matches because there's a sweep to this. And then I super glue all those in place. Uh, and we'll see how that works out. And then I got to build another one for up here. But like I say, once I super glue this, I, I clamp this down, I super glue, then I'll sand off the top so it's smooth, give a little round to the railing, and then glue that down. I'll show you what that looks like when I hit that point. Let me show you a little closer how I set up and made the boards and that set up to do the handrail. I started out with a piece of three quarter inch board. Then I laid out I laid out a quarter inch width and then a one eighth in between and then a qu quarter inch in between each holes. And I drilled it down almost through the three-quarter inch board. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this board off at the quarter inch, sand it, sand the length of the whole board on that side. Then I'm going to go ahead on the bandsaw and cut these three sixteenths off and then sand the bottom of that and then sand this edge here and then lay it out and cut a quarter inch piece out of there along that whole bottom. Then I can take those two and all those holes will line up exactly the same, top to bottom. And I'll put the little pieces of uh, copper wire in there. Now, <clears throat> another thing I need for this is some one eighth aluminum pieces. I'll show you what they do, but what it is is one edge I can sort of sand when it's and I get a wide three inch piece and then I set it to bandsaw, but then I have this. Now to smooth this off so I don't burn my fingers, I'm going to use bell sander. I, this is how I, all the way I keep my this sander, straight up and down, and, uh, belt sander. Simple reason, it doesn't clog up as much as a disc sander. And you can sand just as much. I use it to straighten boards and all that. But I want to smooth this off. Now, I don't want to hold on to this. Aluminum, it gets hot. So what I come up with was a little board I cut a slot into. 
Let me show you how. Ouch. Gets hot, but I got the major majority of that off. Like I say, that makes it handy for you to hold it without burning your hands. All right, let me show you what I'm using this for. All right, my next part of building this boat is making this back paddle. <clears throat> Uprights are one eighth, about a quarter inch wide. And these parts here are three eighths by one eighth thick. And I'll show you what that looks like. Now I'll show you how I made the paddle wheel. I took pieces of one eighth by one quarter aluminum, two and a half inches long. I laid out, you know, with dividers to spread it out equal. And I did the one, and that one's on the bottom. Then I did another one, but what it is, I set the second one on top while it was still a little loose so I could make sure they line up. Then what I got to do is take a take the dividers, do a four and a half inch circle, cut that out, uh, drill a quarter inch hole. Then. On the outside of this, like I say, I, I love this cop, 12, number 12 copper wire. I'm going to take this copper wire and epoxy it on and then epoxy the center one on. So I have the rings. They're going to be epoxied on. After I cut out the outside diameter, get the spokes to the right length, then I'm going to take This three eighths by quarter inch that I just cut, and what that's going to go is, it's going to cut it two inches long. I'll cut it two inch long pieces, and then spread this out. And I'll show you when it comes to that, and then that'll be glued on that, and that'll be the paddle wheel. That'll be how the paddle wheel go. So that's what I needed this one. Now I found. Aluminum is a great thing to have for modeling for the simple reason You can cut it on a bandsaw. You can sand it fairly easily and bend it to a certain depending on what kind of aluminum you get This is is real good, right? I originally was going to build These out of wood and I started going no I build it out of wood. I know I'm going to break one I was going to use one-eighth plywood. I know I would have broke it this way this thing is solid. All right, that's it for now. I found useful on these models is like on this flagpole on the pole. I needed some parts to uh, attach the line to. It goes up to the top. We go through the boom down, hold that up. What I find is these little. I think they're called excursion pins, the little brass pins. That uh, different sizes you can get. Nice head on them. You spread. The other thing I did was you notice on the top of the poles, I needed uh, a loop to run the string down through. And the same thing over here. And I found the easiest way to make that was you need loops. Take some thin wire. Bend it over into a loop, small. That hole's only maybe an eighth of an inch or smaller diameter. Could have even made it smaller. And then just the super glue that into the hole. All right, here's the finished paddle wheel. Got some people on it. 
I forgot what size I ordered the wrong size first, and then I had to order another size. I think you're either 125th or something like that, or 150th. Uh, I forgot, but this is the this is the fi finished, completed paddle wheel. I'll show you what it looks like when I mount it up on the wall. Alright. It is where I hung it. See it's up in the top of my lanai. I got another space, I got another project for first where I'll to put there. But that's the boat. Hung up on the on the wall. <laughs>